everybody, and welcome to another edition of Good Sports, our third installment. This time, we will be talking about Major League Baseball and what's been happening with over the years and see how it's been going. And then afterwards, we're going to be talking about our Red Devils. That's right, the Burlington High School Red Devils. But first, we're going to kick things off with a little bit of baseball from MLB. And I'm here with Mike Espeo. Hi, Robert. How you doing? Welcome to uh, episode three of Good Sports. Yeah. So three, nice and uh, air conditioned in here. But uh, yes. I know the past couple of months have been, a couple of weeks have been pretty humid. I know this week's been pretty humid. Yep. But um, anyways, first off, we're going to talk about Major League Baseball. So I have a question for you. Is baseball dying? Oh, Robert, that's, a, that's the million dollar question when it comes to baseball, right? And it's unfortunate, but I think um, baseball is in trouble. It used to be the, what was known as the national pastime and the, the game that we all grew up with, listening to it on the radio and the Red Sox great run. But these days, it, it feels like baseball is taking a backseat to the other sports. And there, there's a definitely a, a myriad of different reasons um, that it isn't doing as well. And it's kind of sad because, you know, it's kind of our national game. It's our, they call it the national pastime. And to see baseball in this um, kind of situation it, it, it's a bummer. Now, what changes have been made to the uh, sport? So, baseball has gone in an attempt to, to um, well, let me step back a sec. Some of the reasons I think that um, baseball has they had to have a change is the, the demographic is older, and it's uh, more the baby boomers, the people over 60 who grew up with baseball, who love baseball, who make up the core of their fans. And that's really not good for long-term viability of the sport. Uh, you want the younger kids to get involved. You want them to start becoming the fans of the future, buying the tickets and all that. And we're finding in youth sports these days that it's getting harder and harder for towns to field little leagues and little league teams and Babe Ruth leagues and Cal Ripken teams. They're, they're all kind of um, enrollment and interest is definitely down. Um, there's a number of factors for this. I think one, the game is very slow. It's um, it's a different age these days. We're on our phones. We have instant messaging. We have text messaging. We have instant information um, at our fingertips. And when we want it, we want it now. We want it. We don't want it. To wait seven innings for a run. It, it's it's um, the kids these days are just it's too slow for them. And if you talk to many kids, most kids these days don't really know many big baseball players, and that kind of stinks. Because growing up, I would ride my bike to the store to get baseball cards. I could name the whole lineup. And now these these days, kids are playing uh, on their phones, video games, um, doing all the social media, even at a younger age. And even the sports they do play are very different. They're faster paced. One a big sport that's taken over for baseball is lacrosse. Uh, lacrosse leagues are getting larger and larger. And as we just saw here in town, uh, we have a big um, lacrosse group, and they're uh, angling for more field time and stuff. So you're not driving around town and seeing um, like a baseball field filled with kids. It's now lacrosse. So back to your question, sorry. Yeah. Um, I just want to intervene really quick. The baseball cards, do they still come with a pack of gum? Because they uh, used to come with a pack of gum. No, they don't anymore. And, and even now, <laughs> like baseball and sports cards have become very specialized. Yeah. And it's a whole, it's a whole crazy uh, world out there. I don't even know how to follow it anymore with yeah, rookie cards and all different um, special editions, but um, back to your question about the changes. So to try and kind of thwart this and um, make baseball more palatable or more attractive to people, they wanted to cut down the length of the games. Because as you remember, back when the Red Sox were in their run, a Red Sox-Yankees game could sometimes take four hours. These days, society is so much, like I said, faster paced. People don't have that kind of time anymore to sit around and watch a game. I mean, I used to watch, I mean, out of a 162 game season back in the day, I would, I'd probably watch uh, 120, 140 full games, nine innings. But these days, I think we have shorter attention spans. We want it now. So MLB really made um, uh, an imp um, uh, a, a, like a defined and definite impact in to try and make an impact on the, um, the times of the games. And what they did was they wanted to make them shorter so that you're not spending your whole night watching a game. They instituted what, what's called the pitch clock. So there's, you can see them now in every major league stadium where they have a countdown clock 
uh, at each stadium, and the pitcher has to um, deliver the ball to the, the plate before that um, uh, runs out. I think that has definitely changed, and they've also kind of changed the rules on batters stepping out of the box and kind of, you know, adjusting their, their gloves and their, their uh, bat. And um, their, their efforts actually have been very successful. They, they cut down the, the average time of the game. They started this in 23 last year. They, they shaved off about 24 minutes of each game. So the average time now of a game, before it was over three hours, now the average time is two hours and 40 minutes, which is a lot better, a lot shorter. Yeah. And I think, I mean, some of the games are, they're, to watch a game in two and a half hours, I think that's, that's a, a lot better product, and it has worked. I think they should have about maybe two and, so just two innings. Top one, top, top one, bottom one, top two, bottom two. If the game is tied after that point, let's say it's 0-0, zero, zero, you go to another inning. Kind of like in the overtime the NFL, in playoff NFL in overtime, both teams get a chance to get runs. Okay, let's say if it keeps tying and tying and tying. The last team to score to score on base wins. I think they should do that. I think they should have they, I think baseball should be timed. I think it I think it should be timed. A lot I think of time. Yeah. Well, that was the beauty of the baseball and a lot of the baseball fans are older, they're traditionalists, and um, that was always the beauty of going to a baseball game is that there's no pitch clock, there's no uh, running clock, and it's just, it takes as long as it takes, and part of the beauty was that it's just a slower pace, you know, you could just sip your lemonade on your porch and listen <laughs> to the game. You think they should be two innings long? Yeah, I think they just, uh, top, top one, top, Wow. just two innings, one bottom, one one top top one bottom one top two bottom two and mm. if they're both tied after that then it goes into sudden death both teams will have a chance to score if it's tied after that the first team that scores and the next inning after that wins wow robert and it's timed 20 so minute games by robert Pettis. yeah i think it should be <laughs> i think they should be 15 minute uh that, that'd be that'd be a long time no 15 minute um I'm, go I'm going to get to the questions. I apologize. No, they're fine. You're 15 right. 15-minute innings. But whoever scores in the first inning, it goes to the next inning. So basically, if it takes like a minute, let's say they get a home run within a minute, it goes to the bottom of the first. The other team gets a chance. Now, but they they have, they have can score within the 15 minutes. If they don't score within the 15 minutes, then the other team wins. Wow. So that's true. So it'd be pretty interesting, interesting. if they did that. Yeah. But um, back to the our topic. Um, So why do you think... Um, baseball is not as popular as it was. Um, a lot of the reasons I said, it's just, um, the, the, I think uh, the pace of life has gotten so much faster these days. And, um, I think there's so many more entertainment options that we have these days. And I mean, I think it's like the golden age of television. Like all, there are all these shows these days that I can't even keep up with that are just it, like literally your entertainment options and all your different streaming services and then all of your different outdoor activities and, I think if that population, as it, as it ages, that, that, that demographic, the, they're having uh, children and grandchildren, and they don't have the time anymore to kind of focus that amount of time on baseball. It's a, I think it's a combination of a lot of things, but I think um, a lot of the, the, the vast amount of entertainment options to people these days, I mean, whether it be, you know, scrolling your phone, social media, to, I mean, all these new streaming uh, cable and movies and shows, are just it's just people are... They want different entertainment. They want it faster. So what happened with Otani? So this is a big story, and I think it, it's kind of a, kind of indicative of what's going on with baseball. Shohei Otani, the, the game's greatest player, he's like kind of an anomaly. He's like a, a modern-day Babe Ruth. He's from Japan, and he hits home runs, and he's a very good pitcher, which you never see. It was such a cool story to follow because, you know, he'd be pitching a game, and then he'd be going up to bat and hitting home run, and, he pretty much carried the, the team, and last year, he uh, the, he got a he was a free agent, and he's the highest paid player in Major League history. He signed a 10-year, 700 million dollar deal with um, the Dodgers. Anyway, baseball being back to <laughs> tradition, and their 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 hit hit leader Pete Rose not in the Hall of Fame. They somehow found out that like 4.5 million dollars um, was being transferred to bookmaking outfits in Japan from his account, uh, from his bank accounts. And they come to find out it was his interpreter who was doing it. Some people don't believe that. Some people think it's a story. 
but the interpreter has taken the fall for him. But it was kind of a, a big deal for baseball that their grandest star, their biggest star on the biggest stage, was being charged with their like m most mortal sin. So hopefully um, Otani wasn't involved and, and his interpreter anyways taking the fall and they're moving on from that. Now let's shift to the local team, the Boston Red Sox. What are your thoughts on them this year? So that's that's where the story gets even sadder. I'm, I'm a huge sports fan, as you know, like yourself, and I, I like all the sports. And like many people here in the area, I grew up a Red Sox fan. And I just could not be more disappointed with <laughs> the the trajectory of the current trajectory of the team. Um, before we had the, the great runs, you know, even like the 80s and 90s, we got close, never won. Early 2000s, we you know reversed the curse, and then the ownership group went on to win four a World Series. Which, I mean, we went what 86 years waiting for one, and then we finally we get four in you know like 15 years, which is awesome. And it all kind of coincided with John Henry buying the team, I think, in, um, he bought the team in 2002. And for some reason, the team's mentality has shifted, uh, I think, with the Mookie Betts trade to from a winning mentality and trying to win ball games to um, a moneymaker. And, I mean, the Red Sox, they're worth, I mean, I think they're the third most valuable um baseball franchise they're worth 4.5 billion they have an annual income of 62.5 million and they are worth a lot of money they Fenway gets is a smaller park but always gets filled up and banged out because it also works as a, a tourist attraction where people who come in from out of town got to see Fenway Park you know it's um, probably the most popular baseball park uh, in the majors and in that they charge the third most expensive ticket in major leagues and is the most expensive fan experience in the league. And when you, go, when you say fan experience, what you mean is what it costs for a family of four for tickets, parking, a uh, couple hot dogs, couple beers, souvenir, all that, they have a fan cost index and Red Sox are number one. The problem now is that they have stopped spending money in the past like three or four years. They now have gone from always having the first to sixth highest payroll to the 12th Last year they had the 13th, and it has been that shift away from trying to win to turning it into a moneymaker, which is unfortunate. i never been to a Red Sox game. i never been to a Red what? Sox. Never, never been to a Red Sox game. Never been. Wow. Never been. Wow. So wow. you're probably saying, probably save save that money, Robert, because you're not really missing ben, much of this Fenway time. Fenway Park is kind of awesome. Yeah. It's, um, it's a magical place. It's a... a a sports cathedral, if you will, like Lambeau Field. I think you should go and check out Fenway Park. It's still uh, a magical place. Get, get a Fenway Frank? Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Pro, those are probably, uh, they have to be more than $5. Yeah, I think they're $6 yeah, every or $7. Thing, everything's expensive. For a hot dog. Get, yeah. And you can buy a pack of hot dogs how, in Market Basket yeah, for 5 bucks. Yeah, how much is water? Let me guess. Five, probably, yeah, probably 5 bucks. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so I'm on a personal, I will say this now and to my our good sports audience, <laughs> I'm in the second year of my... Red Sox boycott, in which I do not give Red Sox ownership a dime of my money until they start spending more money on payroll. And I actually went to a game this year. <laughs> so I almost broke it, but it was free tickets. And I told my buddy, um, I will go, but um, how'd you get tickets? They're like, they were free. Okay. They're from a friend who didn't want to go. That I will not spend a dime in the park. I paid for food and drinks outside of the park at a private place, That's but I'm still on my boycott just because I'm so frustrated with the team. We have such we have the greatest sports team in America, and this town loves. I mean, you you put a team out there that we've had like last last place finishes three out of the last four years. You put a team out there that has a sniff in the sniff of contention, and everyone's going to jump on it. People love their sports here. People are passionate about sports, and I just think that I'm very disappointed in the way John Henry and the ownership group is now running the team. Now, why do you think they would trade a player like Mookie Betts? Well, that's where that's where the problem started. Is that's when the shift happened. It went from this is a player you want to keep. He's beloved. He's a good citizen. He's good in the community. He's a an all world, all time player. He's homegrown. Um, the kids love him. They buy the jersey. This is the type of player you you open the checkbook for. And they did that. They traded him because they didn't want to give him the big contract. Like I think it. Not as big as Otani's, but bigger contract that he was due for. And again, just a sad sign of the team. 
Now before we're looking at the, I'm looking at the clock right there, but uh, before we shift things over, um, why do you think the, why has the shift in ownership, what's the ownership philosophy? I think they're just in it to make money. They're just a, the Red Sox just a line on a spreadsheet and um, they're now using Fenway as they're doing a lot of development around there, redevelopment, a lot of mixed use, uh, condominiums, a lot of shops, restaurants. They're turning it into a year round attraction and they're, um, they're just turning it into an ATM for themselves. Now, one last question about the Red Sox, mostly about just baseball itself. Talk about Nesson and their app. That's another reason why, that the popularity in the Sox is, is so low. Um, tickets are readily available. Before, there was like a, a waiting room for tickets. Um, you, you, they were sold out by, um, you know, St. Patrick's Day. Now, you need to pay $30 to watch Nesson extra from your cable bill. And you have to watch it on this wonky app, and it's terrible, and nobody wants to pay Thirty dollars for a last right. place team. It's just yeah. not worth it. But I think at yeah. that we should shift over to talk about some good news. Uh, Red Devil Sports is kind of yeah. wrapping up our our spring season, our year. Uh, let's talk a little Red Devil Sports. All how right. are the how are the teams doing last year and going into the final week of the season? Um, I think they're doing well. I should I just go down the list. Whatever you want to do. Let's do down the list because I have I have, uh, I have like two sheets let's, of stuff. So let's let's start. Spread the joy. <clears> Turn <throat> this around. I think we'll go Arbiter. Whatever. All right, let's go. Let's go in order the way I wrote this. So, Unified Basketball, they finished the year at five and zero, but they don't go to playoffs. They went to a jamboree game yesterday, May twenty second, at Wakefield Memorial. So, basically, all the Middlesex, not like the Middlesex leaving for track and everything else, they have like a, a whole jamboree game where they have like games and stuff like that, and they play play basketball and just well, explain have a good time. Uh, explain Unified Basketball because it's kind of a newer thing. And it's a really cool program. Yeah. Explain what that is for people who don't know. So basically, unified basketball is people with like like Special Olympics, like disabilities, and disabilities and stuff. I know Cedric Rodriguez helps out on the team. I know Phil Connors was there last week. I know the head coach is Sean Hart, who is the BHS athletic director. So it just gives them like something to do, and it, it's great because when I was there last week. It was a big crowd. Awesome. A big crowd. They had Lexington there, and they had a big crowd, too. That's so great. it was just like, it was just all fun and games. I know uh, PA announcer uh, Danny Brothers was doing it, and it was, and the refs were just getting it. It was just like a fun event. It's not like a regular basketball in, like, Burlington or anything where yeah. it's just like, okay, we got to stay quiet. Like, you can, like, people were cheering on. So it, it was, it's a really fun event. What a cool program. I love that. And then they had, they had a, <laughs> they had a 50-court shot. Which uh, one of the Lexington players made like at wow. halftime? It was like he made it. He's like, yeah, it was. It was. It was from awesome. half court. From yeah, half court. Half court. Awesome. court. What sport am I talking about? <laughs> I'm going off. All right. All right. What else we got? We got baseball, which is the first year coach um, Chris Passati, who is the class of 2011 here at Burlington High School. Excuse me. You did a piece on him for BCAT. I did back in. Yeah, I watched what, that. Late Very good. March. And how's our uh, first year coach doing? Uh, they finished the season at ten and eight. Nice. And the last game they had was against Bedford, which they lost four to one. But they will continue today. Sorry, tomorrow, May twenty fourth and May twenty fifth, they will be at the Brendan Grant tournament, which is held by Belmont, and they will be for versing Linfield and the other competitors, as I said, Belmont and Reading. So whoever, cool. so basically, like a winner's bracket, loser bracket. So they're going to be facing Reading or Belmont, depending on if they win or lose. So. Good. And then, so in the MIA power rankings, there are 24th out of 56 in D2. And the top 32 make it, right? Yeah. Good. So that's pretty good for a first year. Yeah, that's very good. Let's shift over to something we talked a little bit about earlier, which is it's up and coming lacrosse. Lacrosse. It's very popular now. Girls lacrosse, they uh, are at 12 and 6. I know they have one more game as of this taping today, which is against Chelmsford. I believe that's a later game, probably after we finish, but they are ninth out of 55 in the power rankings in the MIA. That's excellent. D2, which is phenomenal. As for boys lacrosse, they do have another game today as well. As of this statement, North Andover, they finish, They are 13 and 4. You know what they're in the power rankings? I do not. Fifth wow. out of 61 teams in wow. that division, D3. Good lacrosse programs yeah. here this year. So as we move along, um, the Brining – Softball state champions, they are nine and eight. They're twenty five out of sixty two. Obviously, they went a little bit lower because they lost CC and a bunch of the other seniors. Yeah. But they're in the D two MIA power rankings. 
They lost their previous game to Westford Academy 9-1, to which is not really good, but they finish their season Bishop Fenwick on May 24th uh, at home against Marvin. Well, the uh, the teams are wrapping up their seasons, yeah. huh? Yeah. So what do you what do you see uh, for the uh, the playoff? Who do you think? Who do we, who's who's the who are the teams to watch? Sounds like our lacrosse teams are going to be right lacrosse in the Lacrosse teams. Um, I could probably I'll probably, I could probably can I'll continue to tell you like, um, we got we got plenty of time on the clock as we look well, at it. Um, so we got girls tennis there. They oh, I'm sorry, I thought we were done. I'm no, sorry. No, we got playing. Oh boy, sorry. we got a lot more teams to go. <laughs> yeah. We are done. No, my apologies. No, you're, no, you're good. You're to good. The girls, you're good. the boys, tennis teams, uh, yeah. the track teams. Yeah. And all the other teams. That sorry. Are trying no, to no, you're good. <laughs> so the tennis teams, they both they both finished their seasons yesterday. Our girls finished 11 and six, and are ninth out of 60 in D2 in MI Power. So oh, they're going look to play. Boys and high. Yeah, boys tennis finished the season yesterday as well. I was there against Bedford. They lost, but they finished the season at 13-6, and, and they're eighth out of 52 in the D2 power ranking. Wow. So they're, everyone's really going to playoffs. Unlike the Red Sox. Mm, no wood on here. I'll just knock <laughs> on my chair. I'll knock on my chair. Wow, it's going to hey, be a fun, uh, fun yeah. spring. Uh, I'll, you'll probably call next week. Hey, Robert, I found out that uh, uh, baseball didn't make it. What, did you lie to me? No, no <laughs> it's, it's, it's still playing. Um Track, boys track, won their fifth consecutive undefeated spring track season. Wow. So, Max Haar is, Max Haar is a fantastic coach. I mean, every year he just finds a way with all these kids from freshmen to senior, just bringing them in, just training them. They, they do well. And it always seems like he loses, like, a senior that's, like, yeah. super track, like, yeah. Middlesex and League all-star, yeah, and then he, he, had, just, he just reloads yeah, every year. He got, like, when he had, like, this is, like, 2019 Rashad Prakash, and then you had – Paul Hogan, class of 2014. I remember I did stories on them. And then you had um, uh, James Johnson a couple years ago. I think that was right before COVID. I mean, it feels like COVID just took a blunder out of everybody. But yeah, I know yeah. those were really the key players. But uh, it's – yeah, they're, do, they're always doing well. Nice. And they will be competing in the MIA D1 Track and Field Championship. Um Tomorrow and Saturday is going to be originally today, but it rained out a little bit and turned sunny. But there'll be athletes will be competing in the pentathlon, so that is that. Matt Carr does a very good job. Yeah. Kudos to Matt Carr. So the girls track, they both competed in the Middlesex League meet. The girls finished in sixth place, and they had a couple of losses during the year, but they were they were they, they were doing okay. I mean, they have a couple couple of stars, but I mean, I remember it just told me maybe in the fall the numbers were low. So I mean. Back in the past, I mean, you got, you had um, Hannafin last year, 20, 22 to 23. So she did well, but she graduated. I know, I know the other Hannafin is in there. So it should be fun to see how they progress in the coming year. Awesome. Volleyball is, boys volleyball, I believe this is their third year. Third year. Third year. I remember you had. The exchange students, they both played volleyball. I know no, they, just one of them did. One of them, okay. One of them did. I apologize for that. But, How's um, volleyball doing? I need to get to a match. 8-10 and ten this season. And they have two games left on the docket. Lexington today and Bill Ricca tomorrow. But in the D2 MIA power rankings, they're 20 out of 81, so they will make the playoffs. All right. Will they be home? It really depends. They could be on the road. But, again, you're in the playoffs. Now, I'll tell you this. The MIA bracket releases for all the teams. Uh -oh. I will give you the dates right here, right now, Breaking and even news. the times. Even the times I have wow. on, on the MIA Twitter. This is what they said. Fantastic. So let's let's go a rundown. Tennis, May 25th. That They will release them at 11 a.m. Volleyball, May 28th at 11 a.m. Baseball, softball, and lacrosse, all May 29th. Baseball and softball will be at 11 a.m., while lacrosse will be released at 2 p.m. So, yeah, exciting times. A, Everyone's a on pins and needles yeah, finding out what they times. do. A lot of times. But, it, yeah, it's just like everyone's doing well. I mean, Chris Casati, he started out slow, and he just worked the way up. See, when you're a coach, you just got to get a feel of what everyone's doing. Okay, that person's not doing good. Let's, let's switch them over here so they can switch everybody around and see. And once you do that, is they can get things going, get the wheel turning, and this is what – you're gonna get for well, we saw that with Coach Bailey, and they, yeah. they, they improve every year. So yeah. hopefully uh, Coach Casati yeah. can do the same thing with baseball. I believe – I think I looked ahead for football. I know uh -oh. we're a couple months away, but I think I looked on Arbiter. I'm not sure how true it is. But I believe the first game is in Westboro. 
because last fall they started with West Bar and they're going to start in West Bar. But the first home game, week after that, it is against Woburn. Oh. So that will be a big one. That will be the test. Yes. That will be the test. Always the big one. <laughs> it will be the test. But uh, So Mike, do you think, uh, let's talk about some of the, so as you mentioned softball, do you think they can, uh, I know they're a little, they've lost, they lost CC, who was an yep. amazing pitcher, and they lost some talented seniors, but Cassidy and do you think they, uh, how do you think they're going to do defending their title? <sighs> It'll be tough, because right now in that division, Tewksbury is number one, and they played Tewksbury in the state championship back Oh, at yeah. UMass Amherst yeah, last June. Yeah. And it was a great game. Yeah. But that game was like on the edge because they let up. Like Burlington let up and they ba- took it was just back and forth. Yeah. yeah. It was were you were you there? No, I was not there. Oh. I watched online. It was a good uh it's a good drive. But anyways, yeah, that's a drive I mean by is like the drive to Amherst. The physical drive, right? Yeah. It was a nice day out. Yeah. It was beautiful out. Um but it'll be tough. I mean, you got Tough, yeah. you got, you, still, you got a couple of great scenes on the team, but you got got a young team. Younger team. You got Alyssa Monteraza, who's a junior, who's a pitcher. So I mean, the fresh is gonna be on her, but I mean, she already has like a ring and a state championship. Sure. So it's like again, you you always want to defend your title. Like again, like once again, I'll bring up football again. Kansas City, they want to do a three peat. They're gonna defend their title, but I believe. Anyways, <laughs> we'll get to that. In the yeah, fall. we'll get we'll get to that in the fall. We're going. I'm going ahead of myself, but I have a feeling they will. But I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be a tough road ahead. You think they will repeat? I will. I think they do. I think they'll they find a way. They wow. They always find a way. They will they they will that find a way. Excellent. They'll find a way. All right. Well, we'll Lacrosse. See. They both were in the playoffs last year, but they both lost to um, away teams. I forget the names, but I remember girls played. Ursuline Academy, I think boys played Westfield. Don't quote me on that. I will not. I know it was both raining that day, and I remember I was at Varsity Field, and that was, and then they they went to the next round. They lost, but I think I think these two are much different this year. They just keep they keep blowing out teams, and I think they're gonna do it in the playoffs. No, the cross is a great sport. I I never really watched the cross until uh, a couple years ago. My cousin's daughter played for MIT, yeah. and it's fast. It's a it's a great sport to watch. Yeah. I I really should watch more lacrosse. And and now <laughs> it's funny we say this after we just talked about how baseball is dying and lacrosse <laughs> is taking over and I'm talking about how I miss baseball and I wish baseball was better. I'm like, "Oh, I should watch more lacrosse." Yeah. And I think that that goes back to what we were talking about how it's a faster-paced game. There's a lot of scoring. Um, there's a lot of action and I think those type of things people are looking for more in their entertainment their entertainment when they use their entertainment time. So I think tennis will do well too. I mean, last year they were okay, but I think this year they're going to go to the playoffs and just try to compete as hard as they can. And we got volleyball. Great. I said they might be on the edge of the playing edge. away, but I think, I think everybody, everyone has a chance. Everyone has a chance to compete at the highest level they can. And I think one of these teams – I won't change the right now, but one of these teams will do it. And wow. I'll leave it I'll leave it at that because I'm not saying which team will do it, but one of these well, teams will do it. Well, you just said softball would do it. They'll do it, but ano- another one of these another, teams. Oh, wow. Another one. Dual state champion. Yeah, dual state champion. We awesome. also have to give a shout-out, along with Matt Carr, Wingsy Seaman with the volleyball yes. program. Third year for the boys. They've made the playoffs each year yep. and probably in contention this year and will probably sneak in. Mm-hmm. They yep. lost some seniors also. But, I mean, she's doing an amazing pro job. Yeah building a program from scratch we never had i mean i wish we had volleyball when i walked these hallow halls hallowed halls because it's also another one of those sports that's really fun to watch uh, i never until last season really watched volleyball and it's fast pa- again fast pace <laughs> it's very exciting and um just uh it's cool to see burlington high kind of developing a, a volleyball program and, and doing well i mean making the playoffs every year of existence yeah it's awesome so what's your favorite part? It looks like we got about a couple seconds left. What's your? What do you like about BHS sports? I'll ask you. What do you like about just watching all these athletes compete at uh, levels? Well, I think it, it was as a student, it was fun to watch your your classmates kind of compete and root them on. But now that I've become um, old, older, um, I like um, well seeing my friends' kids compete and um, that kind of stuff and. 
my cousin's kids compete. But I think what I really love about high school sports is this time of the season, the, the tournaments. They're so fun. And when they come out with the brackets, especially like basketball is probably my favorite yeah. of all the tournaments. And because we've, you know, we had a good program here, co thanks to Coach Connors. But I love the, um, the making the postseason, watching the tournaments. I think it's just a, so much fun. And I love how everyone gets into it. And, um, you know, the parents get passionate and the kids get passionate about their classmates. And, and they're just fun to watch. So I love the high school sports level. And, of course, Friday Night Lights. Who, who doesn't love football? Yeah. I mean, those are always the fun nights in the fall. Well, Mike, it looks like we have run out of time here on Good Sports. So, Mike, I want to thank you for coming on again as, uh, as my co-host. Thank you. The host. But, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we will see you next time on Good Sports. Thank you and goodbye. Good night. Good night.